on Cursed Hollow. And our blue team on the left side, they are Barrel Boys. And we have Bright winning in top lane, he's played by Blinks. And Zeratul is played by McIntyre. We have uh, CRS Fury on Stitches. And Trommel is playing Falstad. And inside the base, hidden back there, we have a base drop who's not playing ETC, so that's disappointing. Four. And on the right hand side, in the red trunks, we have Evil Geniuses starting in the top lane. We have Idra, AFK on a horse, playing the Valor. We have Rusty on the Ufa. Faye is playing the Zagara. In the mid lane, we have Equinox as the Tychus. And in the bot lane, it is Mookie Pants as the Chin. Mookie Pants? Uh, is he a stand in for EG? I do not know. Oops, sorry. I uh, got the wrong screen set up. That's the right one. Well done. So this is already a huge difference to what we see in the EU, with both teams instantly going to their lanes. We're not seeing any kind of early gank attempts by hiding in bushes and fights at the death rush here. We're seeing both teams head to their brushes, laying it safe and just immediately going to get as much minion killing done as possible. Yeah, and then again you have uh, EG going for a three player push here in top lane. Ooh. Nice try here by McIntyre, but he needed to come up here, because they are pretty strong here with Zagara, Uther and Bella in top lane, so they need three arrows as well to stop this onslaught. Yep, we have Zagara with the extra minions, which is going to help them push the lane as it will hold back. Valor's going to be killing off the wave, and Rusty is here for the sustain on that Uther, so this wave is going to be pushing pretty heavily, so this is why they now have three members up here, four Barrel Boys. And they're just going to try and clear this wave as much as possible. Brightwing getting out some good harass. Yeah, she definitely does. And McIntyre with Abathar on his back uh, can't stand his ground. And that's Pajamather, actually. Not it seen him on EU. It is a lovely skin. Very yeah. nice to see. And this is a, just an intense battle here in this top lane. Both teams just dancing back and forth, looking for their opportunity to try and get it down. But. EG are coming out very much ahead of this because they're actually going to get a tower before the first tribute even spawns and down it goes. Rusty not even caring that Zeratul's on him. Just going to tank it all yeah. and this they're going to get one tower for the second. This is massive uh, for EG already. I mean the problem well. is uh, Barrel Boys, they don't really have a warrior up here. They need a warrior to stop this. Otherwise it's they like can't Falstad really engage into it. Up here, wasting his fly before the tribute spawns. A risky maneuver but he is here to deal damage and help clear the wave. Brightwing. Head down to, headed down to the bot lane, which means that she will now be fighting Chen, which is not going to end too well for her. She's not going to be able to get too much. Nice polymorph, though, to remove the shield on Chen and just get a bit of extra damage. But Roman's actually clearing this wave pretty well. In the mid lane, Tychus and Stitches showing each other the mutual respect they deserve, and neither one has really gone for anything yet. And there's a tribute. Very lucky for Trommel that he doesn't hasn't wasted his fly, as it is exactly in the lane he is yeah, at. Yeah, a little bit lucky for him. And uh, also a good position for EG. Oh, Faye doing a good job just clearing those um, clearing those mines there from Abathur. And she starts channeling immediately, but getting disrupted by McIntyre. And he's trying to find an angle here. Yeah, McIntyre looking for his angle. There is Idra. Idra is the target. He is fishing, but they actually going on to Equinox. Tribute has already been taken by EG, but Mokipads is in here. He is tanking it. It's Fury taking a lot of damage being dropped very low. There's the Chen Kick, and Shen and Valor are able to take it down. Equinox gets killed up by Rusty at the last second. He was being targeted by Trummel there. And EG take first blood. Yep, and they're taking the first tribute as well. So, nice little team fight for them here. And it looks yeah, like we'll see a little shift in lanes oh, now, which does make sense. Yep, Idra was just uh, harassed a bit by McIntyre, took a little chunk of health off. Nudra, feeling good. He's going to head to the bottom lane and just start doing that damage. Idra is playing the volley build, so he's going to be... The multi-shot build, sorry. So he's trying to get as much damage done over wide areas as possible. He's going to help push this lane very, very easily. It does mean, though, he's sacrificing any chance of lifesteal he would be getting from the Hungering Arrow or the Vampiric Assault Talents. Yeah, so he really relies on Uther um, to get that sustain up. But, and I like the idea here out of EG to just rotate the lanes and get the Garrel, uh, get that really good pushing squad into a different lane and just push again on these towers. Get these towers down, get the gates down and just have an easier way into it uh, later on because that helps out massively for the curse. 
Yeah, it's a fantastic idea. Second tribute has spawned. EG just giving this one away in exchange for the push they are currently getting in this bot lane. Zeratul is going to take that. Chen was thinking about heading down there to try and disrupt, but is going to leave it. Tychus actually going to get his team a little bit further ahead thanks to the fact that he was uncontested in his mid lane for a bit. But now Zeratul's here, he will soak up quite a bit of XP. But all of this is while EG continue to push super hard in this bot lane with Zagara, Bala, and Ufa. Yeah, and ammo is, is gone on one of the towers. Time. Second tower also completely out of ammo. So, yep, EG just going for the gates here. And then we'll get this one as well. So they it's all up to the tribute well. slayer. This is, oh, the, the hooks have not been landing for Fury, really struggling. Next tribute should be spawning quite soon. Once again, mid lane has been left completely abandoned in terms of XP. Luckily, none of the minions in it died. So McIntyre is actually going to be able to grab all this XP without losing any to the tower. So that is actually pretty good for him. Rusty was actually looking for a stun there in the bot lane to try and get some damage done. In the meantime, Mookie Pants is still dueling Blinks and it's, uh, it's actually not going that well for Mookie Pants. He's beginning to roam down as he expects the tribute will be spawning down here and it is. This is once again good positioning for EG. They are ready. They already have three people down here and Chen is already on the way. Equinox taking a bit of damage does stun McIntyre. Equino uh, Mookie Pants, sorry, did that but and Equinox Looking for the damage, but he was already slowed by the Singularity Spike. So they're going to head down here and grab this tribute. Oh, this is a free much tribute like a for EG. Oh, good. Interesting. The, the stun, the brute though, by Milky Pants. There is a spray coming out by Idra, doing so much damage. Brightwing instantly pops, and nice shock and off from Trubal, but he's getting Hungry Arrow, taking a lot of damage, but he is going to survive. Idra is still alive in this. Milky Pants jumping in as well to try and keep his team alive. Idra does go down. There's the ult from Milky Pants to keep him alive, but he is going to have to escape. And that was a great fight by Barrel Boys, doubling EG's kill count. Yeah, but they need to make it count now. They need to get the boss right away because they lost the tribute. They won the team fight, but they lost out on the tribute, completely giving that up and just luring EG in there. But this does give them a little bit of time to get their boss. Uh, Shen not really realizing yet, and none of the other EG guys are getting into getting into position to stop this. So they will go for yep. their boss and Realize maybe not, contest the EGs. In their base. They can't really do much about it. They've only just respawned. They're now going to start heading down to this tribute. This is one they kind of need to get. They want that curse to get back the control of this game that they've kind of let slip from their fingers. However, teams are pretty much going to be both 12 by the time they get here. But while this is happening, Golem is going to push bot lane. They need to harass this. Rusty is actually being left pretty uncontested here. And he does get interrupted by Brightwing. But here's the strafe again by Idra doing so much damage. Trouble being forced to back up fully. And Faye is in the back. She's going to grab that tribute, and that will be the first curse over to Evil Genius, and they're going to move straight over to this golem. Yeah, they're going to deal with the golem just really quickly, and then switch lanes, because they have top lane already um, already pushed in quite well. They have had the towers already taken care of, gates taken care of, so I'll see that they get uh, at least a fort out of this, possibly yep. two. They're going to go for this fort, take it and take it down. They have been slowed down a bit due to the fact they did have to kill that golem, and in the meantime, we are going to see Barrel Boys do what I like, uh, a move that I really like here. They're just going to try and counter push here. Their lanes are, their top lane is not pushing and they still have a surviving giant up here. There's not much ammo in this top lane, so Zeratul dancing up here with Abathur, they're going to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, really nice idea to have Abathur on the Seed Shine. Yep, EG have rotated from bot lane, which they've already taken down the fort. Going to try and get mid lane fort, they do have some bruisers to deal with here. But they are five. There's the ultimate evolution onto Falstead. We could see a shock and awe. It is up to try and kill off some of them as of EG. But EG played it safe. Back it up. But there's the gorge onto Chen. He does have a wall he can kick to. Try and use an escape. There's the nice one pressing. There's shock and awe. But it's too late. The ult was popped by Chen. And everyone's getting into that void prism. But EG are now just going to back up to safety. Rusty taking a lot of damage. There's the second shock and awe. There's the strafe coming out from Valor. But oh, Emerald dodges the Emerald wins. able to survive. And no deaths from Eva T. We got very close on both sides, but yeah, no EG deaths at all. Um, just played this really safe. And unfortunately, uh, Fury just kind of wasted uh, his hook there because uh, Uther wasn't really that far away, and he could have used it on later on and uh, probably taken him out. But it, at least they did survive the curse. Only lost a single fort, and oh. even pushed top lane a little bit, as you pointed out. Yep, EG were thinking about going for their golem there, but instead rotated down to Death Rush and are now trying to catch out Fury. Fury, taking a lot of damage. Mookie gets That's a really good hook. He's still on cooldown. Oh, 
Oh. Right, the about there's the, there is the Varying more though. Gets only Brightwing, but I don't really have a follow-up to this. Grenade hits only Trummel. And EG lose one member for zero. And once again, kills still going in favor of Barrel Boys. Rusty is being chased. Able to dodge the hook. He's taking a lot of damage from Trouble. Trouble's now pulled out of position, though. He goes down to the grenade. Mercantile has already blinked out. Fury is being chased down by Rusty. Amphus on his head to do some damage, but he does go down. And EG instantly turning it around. And they will yeah. now get this mid fort. Amazing turnaround for them here. Uh, they caught up in XP now as well. They will get the fort. And that does give them a nice boost as well. They could be rotating up as well. Maybe try to get the top for it. Only Abathur's in there and he needs to watch out. I mean, yeah, yeah, they're, they're rotating up, but I think they're, their own. yeah, exactly. Uh, they're rotating for defense. So we'll take care of those minions and then possibly have a little bit of time left to go for their boss. But McIntyre is in position. He knows what's up. Sees fire is already moving over there and can point out whenever they're going for the boss. Yep, and they are going to do it. We see almost the entirety of Barrel Boys is now on the way. Stitches is a bit far out. He might get there in time, but this boss is dropping quite quickly already at half health. Stitches is about halfway there, though. He may make it in time as long as, if, unless EG can f just focus this down super quick. But Stitches is now here. Needs to land the Hail Mary hooks in order to have a chance. Brightwing needs to get in there, and then Emeralds win to blast out EG so that they can get it. And EG attempting to reset the boss so that they can have a chance to fight here. But here comes Tychus from the other side. And they have completely blocked out. Oh, fire yeah, grabbing the boss. Void yeah, Void Prison not doing that, that uh, badly here. And Wings almost taken out there. But getting void out for now. Zeratrim just screwed his own team in that Void Prison. Blinks was going for the interrupt on that golem. And the Emerald went to try and blast it out. But he got locked down. And you still capture the golem if you are locked in a void prism. And we already saw members of Evil Genius in there, so they were able to take that. So golem was taken by EG. They got a kill onto Brightwing, who was locked in by her teammate. And EG are going to take the third fort of the game. Yeah, and they also grabbed uh, the tribute in the middle of this. So that's the tribute, fort, and the boss going to them. Uh, can't really get all that much, uh, all that worse for Barrel Boys right now. Yep, this is not looking good. They were looking so good up to this point, but they are now seriously struggling. They are falling behind. They are currently just about a level behind, and we're seeing EG immediately going to move to this mid lane, clear it out, and then possibly head down towards Barrel Boy's boss. And that looks like what they're going to try and do. Tribute might spawn here soon, but they're going to look for it. There it is. There is the Tribute. They can abandon that if they want to in favor of this boss. Barrel Boy's is here, so it looks like we're going to see a fight. Yeah, not everyone out of EG is in position, but they're trying to lure them out. Just showing Shen there and Zagara as a single target. Yeah, oh, the and it looks like Barrel Boys are going stitches. for it. Curse There's hooks, Stitches. There's the straight from Idra doing huge amounts of damage to Blinks. Blinks is dropped solo. He is able to shield himself. The double Hunter Killer from Fey, though, instantly takes down Blinks. Base drop is picked up as well. Equinox completely fine in there. Down goes Fury, and it is just trouble and... Uh, uh, Makatai left alive again. There is nothing they can do to contest this boss. EG will grab this and their best chance now is Trummel if he has fly up flying to the top and grabbing that tribute. Yeah, but I don't like I don't this contest coming out of Trummel. He should just fly up, grab the tribute. That would give him two tributes and that would force a team fight out of EG for the next. He probably doesn't have it though. That is the issue. And, like he's currently still just trying to contest it. It looks like they might try to dive in. They're at all diving in. They're diving straight back out oh, again. Nice though. void prison and a good shock on Arbor. You could not grab it when you're in void prison. Yeah, you should have waited a little bit. Straight, straight almost catches McIntyre. He's able to back up. But EG do grab the boss and now we're going to see them head up. They will grab this tribute and then they will deal with the Siege Giants in the top lane. The Siege Giants though were able to take down the first of EG's forts. Yeah, so they caught up a little bit in XP, also got their level 16 talents up, so let's check those out. We have Critterize on Brightwing, uh, Locust Brood on Aberther, Pulverize on Stitches and Double Bombs for Zero Tool. Overdrive on Felstad and the Brood expansion for Zagara. Then Stone Skin is picked up by Tychus, uh, Blood for Blood on Valor, Uther Turk, Harden, Focus, and Combination Attack for Shen, of course. But a little bit These different talent choices here. Uh, you think so? Yeah, very similar to the EU scene here. Like, for example, Zeratul, very standard. But gathering power, definitely want to be taking the double bombs. But an interesting pick, taking the damage over time on Cleave rather than yep. the staying stealthed and extra range, which is a 
uh, something that some players seem to favor, but seems to be working for him. He is dealing a lot of damage in this game. He currently has 34 C damage. Not able to get that all onto heroes, though. He can't really harass without being counted on because he does not have that co uh, continuous cloak. Yeah. And I'm also kind of iffy on Fury right now, because usually when his, looks hit, when his hooks did land, they were kind of like short-range hooks. Those hooks that don't really help out all that yeah. much. So not taking Fishing Hook is actually kind of a weird move, but the stun is much more important in this scenario due to the fact that there is a Valor on the other team. Yeah. Oh god, Death Rush. Death Rush! There's the Ooh, kick! And Mookie Pants. Nice Void Prism by Fury! Is it kind of is separated out here, but he's pretty fine. There's the ultra move, but there's the straight. Fury taking a lot of damage. Blinks is probably dead. McIntyre, nice positioning here. He's able to blink back in though, but it gets himself killed by doing so. And wow. first the only one alive. EG, full wipe, and somehow Tychus lived that in his Odin. He has pretty much full health once he is out of this thing, but he's going to use it while he can and just do as much damage as possible. Abba for sending the Locust after him to do the damage, and they're just going to dive this. They got the tribute. They're going to dive this. Try and catch Abathur. Oh, catch Abathur's in trouble. The kick. Down he goes. Yeah, nice body block by Shen. And they will get a keep here and possibly even end the game. There's still a 20-second timer on uh, on Stitches. And I, th I don't think that uh, Barrel Boys can really fight here without Stitches. So EG they, just going to dive this. They can't fight at all. with They're all dead, and even with the respawn timers, going to be difficult. EG might actually win before this happens. The curse is still active. There's the strafe, clearing the minions, doing damage to the core. Then he's going to keep wailing on this. Stitches is alive. They're trying to do it, but it is too late. Faye is in the back with the Hunter Killers, and they do take it. Chen just ran straight through the core. He doesn't care. And <laughs> EG takes the first game, and they will move on to the next round. Yeah, and Idra with his strafe, like he was never interrupted. So much damage. 70,000 damage, siege damage, and 50,000 hero damage. That is just massive. Yep, fantastically well played there by New Evil Genius.